Well, <clears throat> hidely ho, and on to our next project. <clears throat> so, this is a musical instrument, which looks in terrible shape. You can see the case looks horrible. <laughs> and it is horrible. It's a cheapy cardboard case, and some of you may know that shape. Um, you can try and put it in the uh, comments, and I'll see if you get it right, but I know that's kind of weird, because you'll see what it is in just a second. This is an auto harp. Well, let's say it's an auto harp in name because you'll see what it looks like. So, oh boy, that's not looking so good. What do you think? Can we restore this one? I have no idea about how old this is. You can see that it's it's covered in all kinds of crud. There's a name on there, but I can't quite see it. And all of these are the things you push down on an auto harp to make the different sounds. And they're all in pieces here. So. The question will be, can I restore this and make it look nice and sound nice? And the answer may be no, but let's uh, give it a try together and see what we come up with. <clears throat> Who knows, I might be able to do something for the case as well, but that's in pretty bad shape. For those of you who have ever done this kind of thing, starting off with the shape of a case is actually easier than going from scratch to try and make one. So some of this is, you know, kind of maybe restore the case by strengthening... Oops, i got to show you what I'm looking at here. Strengthening these corners by putting some extra strength underneath or even uh, something on top here. But we'll, we'll get into all of that as we do this project, and we'll see what fun we can have together. All right, let the restoring begin. All right, <clears throat> time for the <laughs> unboxing of this uh, lovely instrument here, the auto harp. So I'm going to move you back a little so you can see what it looks like coming out of there. There we go. How's that? Yeah, that's pretty much right in the middle. Okay, so we have all kinds of goodies here. And this will be something we have to to work on. Oops, lost a spring there. We're going to lose springs. <clears throat> so, we've got these and I don't know if you can see that, but it says, whoops, let me turn it that way. There we go. It says A7. And that would be an A with a seventh note in it. And here is oops, D minor. So I could keep going like that, but all of these are different notes when you push them down. They push on the strings. Um, and they use these to either mute the strings or they let the ones that are going in the middle here um, ring. And so by doing that, they you end up making these different chords. <clears throat> on a guitar, you use your fingers to push down on things and give you the different uh, notes so that you can play a chord. In this case, it's all predetermined for you. So um, the strings look like they're sort of intact but it'll need a little work. So let me uh, get started here. I'm not gonna do anything while it's running here. That'd just be boring for you. Let me get all the pieces apart and brush it off because it's got dust all over it. And it'll be a little more obvious what we're gonna do with it. All right. All right, so these uh, go on here a lot like this. And you can see I've already taken half the strings off of here. So I'm gonna be taking them off this end. Get in close here so you can see it's just a pin with the string wrapped around it and I'm having to pull each one off. It's got some paint or something on there that makes it a little difficult. And I'll try and take one off of here, see if I can do this with the camera. So I'm grabbing it like that and kind of rotating it. Hmm. It's a harder one to get off. Let's see if I can do this one. There we go. So I'm just going through and taking each one off. Sorry, that got a little out of focus. Some of these are tighter than others. Got to loosen the string up. Put it on this. Loosen up. Hmm. Well, anyhow, you get the idea. I'm using a pair of these hemostats. Just, 
I could probably use uh, needle nose pliers, but I was trying to be delicate. I didn't want to damage the uh, wood on the end here. <clears throat> Anyhow, I'll take all those off. And so these go on here, and then there are two rails on either side. That look like this. Oops, they should go this way. They go on either side like this, and those go in there. And uh, so what I'm going to do is take all the strings off, and then I can clean the wood up a little better and uh, get it all maybe polished up. I'll see if it needs painting, but I'd, I'd like to not do that. You can see the name on this is actually Auto Harp, which is, I think it's a trademark, but that's what these instruments are called as Auto Harps. So I think that the original name of Auto Harp was put together by this particular company. I'll have to look it up. It's got a serial number and everything on here. I haven't done any of that yet. I'm not even sure I remember where I got this thing from. But I'll uh, keep you up to speed and show you how the progress is going. All right. <clears throat> well, I'm not sure where I left off here, but I've been working on cleaning up the finish on this. And you can see a little bit of it here. Because it's a little shinier now. I think I'm going to leave this so that it looks a little weathered. And I might have told you I looked this up and it's... Um, there's a serial number on this one. Let me turn this over again here. I don't know if you can see that serial number on there. Kind of hard to read, but I looked that up and it's probably from the 19, early 1940s that this was made. And you can see some of that on the trademark here, um, but also the serial number. <clears throat> Not a very expensive instrument, but, uh, you know, it's kind of fun to restore it. So what I've been doing is sanding off the finish a little bit, and I'm not, you can see it's not perfect, but it's you know, getting smoother. But I'm also taking all the strings off, and here they are. I'm going to take you down for a lower look here. Oops. That's one thing about these strings, they get caught on everything. Let's see if I can focus here. So this is how it looks. You can see the strings wrapped around the pins there. So I'm taking them off one by one. And then that'll allow me to get to the finish. And then I'm doing this. Oops, moving around a lot here. I'm going ahead and put the, the strings on here. And you can see I've put the, um, the strings um, note that is going to be playing that corresponds to the notes on here. Sorry, it's upside down, but you can see it may be better here. So each of these is what that string is labeled with. So I think I can reuse these strings, so I don't have to get a pack of new strings. We'll see. There's one or two missing, but I think I can figure out a way to do that. Anyhow, we're continuing to make progress, and I'll keep you up to speed. All right. Well, so um, I'm on my first coat of of uh, lacquer. I've decided to use lacquer on this one and I uh, wasn't too sure how it was going to do but it seems to be alright. It doesn't seem to be orange peeling too badly. You can see a little bit in there but I do like the color that it, it got. The, um, the water dye, water-based dye, did a nice job of, of filling in some of the defects or the places where the stain was had gotten kind of thin. So it gave it a nice even black color, but it didn't take away from the older look. So it still looks old, but um, but better. I suppose that's the right way to put it. So anyhow, I'm using, just so you can see here, using some deft clear wood finish satin lacquer on that. And so the, the trick is, on the first coat to put, um, put a very light coat over the top and that seals the water-based stain down and then from then on um, you can start putting a little bit heavier coat of, of lacquer. Mm -hmm. The idea with lacquer is to build up multiple layers. Some of the instrument makers put as many as 15 or 20 layers on of lacquer I think but probably not going to go that much. But enough to protect the finish over time and uh, I'll show you the front of it once this dries and I haven't sprayed that. I'll show you before and after or even during while I'm spraying. All right. So 
so it's getting kind of dark out here. But I thought I'd try and give you a look see at what the so this is this has just got the um, water-based dye, black dye on it. I've tried to get it off of here. I wanted to leave that yellow look. I thought that looked kind of cool. Makes it look kind of old. So all of this, this one, and these guys are all kind of a yellowish color now. So it keeps that sort of old antique -y look. So here we go. I'm just going to do a light coat on this. So here we go. Not much at all. And that's about it, like that. Come around here. That's all I want to put on there. Just, just, oops, sorry. Just enough to get it kind of stuck down. But you can see it's kind of got that nice. It looks nice now, and I don't. Th I think it'll help protect the finish, but it does give it a little bit more of a, a polished look, without taking away the uh, the old look. So, we'll see how that looks. Again, sorry for the lighting; it's getting a little darkish out here. But I think that gets us started. So that'll be the first coat on there, and I'll just keep putting coats on. That's kind of boring, so I don't think you need to see all that. So luckily, it doesn't look like it's um, doing the orange peel, which is kind of a rough lifting up of the finish when you put something like a lacquer on. But it looks good. Again, it keeps that old cracked look, so the finish has kind of a more of an ancient look to it, but it still protects it. All right. So we'll uh, keep moving on with this one. <clears throat> All right, so here we are. We're at the next phase. Now I've got all the strings on. You can see all the strings are on. And I had to replace one. You can see it right there, kind of a shiny one. And I need to tune it all up. But here's the here's where the, the things that make the cords are. This is how that works. So there's a spring there. This bar goes up and down. That bar has little pads on it that push on some strings. And this pad mutes those strings and wherever there's a gap it lets those strings play and that makes that chord. So in this case that's going to be an A minor chord. And the next one would be an A7 chord. So I gotta get all these strings tuned to these. You can see there. I haven't done that yet. But I will say putting the strings on this is really kind of a tedious job. <clears throat> Just gotta make sure to get them all over the edge and I was going to replace the strings but they uh, a set of strings for this thing costs like almost a hundred dollars and it's really just not worth that much but it looks nice uh, and I'll get these all tuned up you can hear it now it sounds a little like a harp but can you hear that when I push it down yep so anyhow I will let you know when I get the next phase done all right <clears throat> all right, so got all these on there and got them in the right order, I think. So that's it's called a 12 chord um, auto harp. Just learned that because so, there's 12 of these bars, each one of them is a chord. So now it's a matter of tuning it up and then we will be done. <laughs> 